Okay, welcome guys. I'm uh, Roel Barstra from NEP Group, the Netherlands. And today I'm going to show you guys what we have been working on in the last two years together with Zero Density. Uh, so two years ago we were working with a different platform. Uh, this uh, uh, limited us in the uh, realism that we were trying to achieve. And the show that we were working on was called Wette dat ik het kan, which translates to I bet that I can do it. So this was basically people uh, who said like I can eat a cactus and then they would eat a cactus on television. Um, and in this show there was uh, the most important part uh, for us that was the keying was had to be really good because in the first show they recorded a couple of glasses in front of the green and the cactus itself was in front of the green and we instantly noticed the difference between our previous uh, platform and uh, the new uh, reality platform for us new by that point in time. And uh, so we started developing uh, a larger team to create more and more shows using reality and get uh, educated people in uh, from the game industry to work with uh, the Unreal Engine. And uh, in the next show that we're going to show is the uh, Double Deal. And Double Deal was a, an interesting one because it really showed off that the creative people who are developing the shows were actually able to come up with a slightly different idea that was actually not doable for them without the virtual set. They wanted someone in a different studio to be projected into the virtual set. So as you can see, there's one guy, he moves into the elevator, he moves up. By that point in time, he's not in the studio anymore. And this was to visualize to the audience at home that sometimes the glass would turn opaque. And this was to visualize that we wouldn't be able to see or hear the other person. And when we were able to see and hear the other person, the glass would be, uh, the opaque would become glass again, and uh, the show continued. And uh, this was really good for us because it showed uh, the uh, uh, Endemol Shine team that we were able to do uh, extraordinary things inside the zero density uh, engine. So after this, we started to focus on uh, realism because uh, everything had looked uh, very gamey up to this point. So we were trying to achieve uh, the next step in uh, photorealism for uh, augmented graphics. And uh, the first chance we had for that is, I believe, was uh, Eurosport. And Eurosport had their uh, show uh, done in a very small studio. I think uh, it might have actually been a smaller green box than this one. Uh, maybe a little bit more extended over here, but it was in their uh, in their coffee room. They didn't have a studio. They wanted to do the Winter Olympics in the Netherlands, and uh, we converted their uh, lunch space into a studio, uh, which was a very good collaboration between the guys at lighting, the guys who painted the wall, and the guys who did shading to make sure this small studio actually looked like a really large, realistic set. And as you can see, the desk is physical. And because of the great keying, uh, we can still see the shadows that are casted from the lights on the floor. Uh, and they stay intact. And that, of course, all makes sure that the, the, the desk actually looks like it's standing inside uh, the virtual space. So that was really good. We uh, got a lot of people uh, liking the realism that we had in our set. Uh, we made it a bit flexible for Eurosport. So in the background, they uh, load in 16K uh, panoramic uh, photos, uh, which they shot themselves uh, in, uh, in Pyeongchang. And uh, we had to Photoshop them a bit to make sure there was actual snow there because it was the Winter Olympics and there's no snow in Pyeongchang. But anything else is just uh, from a photograph. Um, and after this, we started uh, collaborating with uh, uh, a bit more with Sego Sport. We already had a very long collaboration with Sego Sport with some minor augmented reality uh, elements here and there. But they also wanted this uh, virtual studio production. Uh, but as you can see, it's Formula One. They wanted a bit more gamey looking uh, uh, feel to it. They have like the gamey looking intros. And they wanted to stand inside a garage that was next to a pit box. So 
They put in their own desk uh, and they have uh, their virtual LED screen that can go up and down. And it's the same set that I'm standing in right now. And it's uh, th the beautiful thing that we did there was we actually put a projector up uh, to uh, show what's on the virtual screen. So you can actually see that the uh, presenters can actually interact with the green <coughs> with the green screen and uh, they can see what's happening inside their virtual set so it's a very light tint of green that, uh, that we make sure it still gets keyed away with the keyer uh, and uh, makes it much more comfortable to point out statistics that are actually just slightly visible on the wall for the presenter and this was really fun because we also discuss with them, hey, we want to we wanna do something with statistics. And statistics are really important in these uh, sports shows. And they had a statistics provider called Gracenote. And uh, Reality has an API called the Reality API. And that's great, <laughs> great naming. Uh, and uh, we basically made a piece of software called V2 Reality, which uh, the operator, the operation team, we, d we as designers don't even touch it anymore. We as designers develop 3D templates and the operation team basically fills in the feed that they want to receive. They get this from the production team and they get all the data in this interface and they select which uh, elements in reality they want to push it to. So they see all the data from all the players and they want to do a head-to-head. -head. We made a 3D head-to-head uh, -head template and we'll actually push it uh, into this uh, virtual element uh, using the reality API. And after this, they uh, uh, just wanted more and more. So we uh, started to developing virtual camera movement fly-throughs through their very small studios. This is in Holland, so of course everything is really tiny. Uh, and this virtual camera movement uh, was developed uh, inside the reality setup uh, to make sure they, uh, uh, they had a much larger studio in which they can, in the front, put an insane amount of statistics. So anytime they start a show, they have their leader, which is just 2D, and it goes through the leader, flies into the studio, and then they have more than enough space to actually, or flags, to put in uh, 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 any, any data coming from their uh, feed to reality software. And uh, this was, uh, this was uh, a really, uh, new way for them to present because the production team was basically able to set up a new show every week and this was really important to them because every week they have a slightly different director, slightly different producer sitting there because it's uh, sometimes freelance work and they just uh, get someone new in. They want to do completely different camera movement. They can move around the elements uh, using the reality uh, software and that made sure they have one of the most flexible studios right now in the Netherlands even though it's insanely small. So that's our uh, latest production. And uh, we're, of course, working every day on new productions, which we will showcase in the near future. Um, this uh, concludes my talk about reality. Uh, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, check uh, some of my cards over there or ask me. I will be around for about 15 minutes. Yeah?